I thought to myself, in preparation for our time together and enjoying this nugget, what can we do to get the most bang for the buck? And so here's our plan. What we're going to do is let's take a look at the big picture of how a network operates. We'll remove some of the mystery of how it works. And as we do so, we'll also touch on some vocabulary terms so that when you and I hear those terms, we'll say, ah, I get it. I know what that means. Let's begin. And let's use this topology. Let's imagine we have a user, Bob, right here at computer two, and that this server right here on this local network is a web server. So let's imagine that Bob, using a browser, wants to open up that browser and connect to this server and get a web page. That's our objective. Now, from an oversimplified way of looking at it, we just tell Bob to put in the name of the website he wants to reach, press enter, and poof, it just happens like magic. But for you and I, it would make sense to peel back the onion a little bit and take a look at some of the other details that are happening behind the scenes. And as we pull back these layers, let's go ahead and draw a table. And if you want to do this along with me, that would be fantastic. I'm going to start with a fairly big box. And then I'm going to draw four lines inside of that. One, two, three, and four. And then just for grins, I'm going to go ahead and put a little line here and also a little line right here. And we'll start from the top down as we identify behind the scenes a lot of the work and details that are going on. So Bob's computer is, when he's going out to a website, his browser is requesting a service. Now there's lots of services that we can get on a network. We can have web services, we could have file services, we could have streaming services for music and video and a lot of other types of things as well. So Bob's computer is going to be requesting some type of service. In this example, with a web page that Bob's trying to get to, he would be looking for some type of a web service. Also, sometimes that's called an application. So the application may be web services, or an application may be file services, or an application may be streaming. And that's the application or the service that Bob is trying to use. So whenever we hear the concept of a network service, we can also kind of think of a network application or what the network is being used for, what it's delivering. Also in that light, Bob in this case would be a client who is making the request and the server would be considered a server who's delivering results back to the client. So when Bob is asking a web server for a web page, in the request, it needs to be clear about what he's asking for. So before he sends that request over, somewhere in that request, we have to identify the application that Bob is asking for. And so we'll put that up here. And also over here on the left, I'll just write app. That's the app that Bob's looking for. Now, in addition to that, when we make requests over the network, there are a lot of other details that need to go into the request for that web service, including something called a transport layer protocol. And that's what we're going to call this layer right here, the transport layer. And our computers are going to choose the correct transport layer protocol. Now, protocol is just a fancy word for a set of rules. And the two major protocols that are in use today on the internet are TCP, these are transport layer protocols, and TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol, or UDP, which is User Datagram Protocol. There are a few others, but those are the two main ones that are in use. And for now, let me tell you about two major attributes or, or things about these two protocols. TCP is the protocol that cares. What do you mean, Keith, the, the protocol that cares? With Transmission Control Protocol, if TCP identifies that something was dropped, like some packet or message was sent to the other side, but it never arrived. There was never an acknowledgement. The transmission control protocol will, in the background, automatically identify that, that did not make it and will facilitate a resend. And one of the secrets about TCP of how it's reliable and can identify that maybe all the messages didn't get sent is that it has a lot of overhead, meaning it's sending extra packets to confirm, did you get it? Did you get it? Yes, I got it, good. And all that extra overhead makes TCP a little bit slower, but it is reliable. The other big protocol at this layer right here, at this section of our network protocols is UDP. And with user datagram protocol, there's not a lot of overhead meaning it doesn't check to see whether stuff arrived or not, and as a result, it's not reliable. It's sort of like throwing a brick over the wall and you hope it lands because there's no acknowledgments, there's no checking to see whether or not that information made it to the server that we're sending the data to. So in a protocol stack, a protocol is simply meaning a set of rules, in a protocol stack or a grouping of protocols, these are protocols that can all work together to facilitate communication across the network, in this case between Bob and the web server. So this section right here where TCP and UDP live, that's called the transport layer. 
And I really like the idea of the word layer because it's just one component in this protocol stack, a group of layers that work together to send and receive messages across the network. Now, the good news is that once we have an application layer service like web services that we're asking for, those application layer services are written to use a specific transport layer protocol. So for web services, they're using it the transport layer TCP. So in this example, UDP wouldn't be used. The web service is going to use TCP for reliable communications. So in addition to Bob's computer identifying the service that he wants and also including the transport protocol that's going to be used based on that service, Bob's computer also needs to include the address of the server. And I'm going to call that right here IP address. Now an IP address is very similar to an address that we have in a place that you live. There's two major parts. There's the house number, which identifies an individual house on a street, and there's also a street name. And IP addresses are very similar to that. IP addresses identify a specific device on a network, like a house number. It also identifies the street or the network address where that host or device is sitting. And this logical layer or section where Bob's computer adds the IP address of the server is called the network layer. And a good reminder for that is that the IP address identifies the network where that computer is along with the individual host on that network. Now regarding Bob's request, in addition to adding the server's IP address to the request that he's going to send out, he also needs to include, if it's a local server, the network interface card layer 2 or MAC address. Now MAC is an acronym that stands for Media Access Control. And it basically boils down to that on an Ethernet network, which is traditionally what we're using in high-speed wired networks, every network interface card has its own burned-in address from the factory. It's 12 digits long. Sometimes it's called a MAC address. Sometimes it's called a physical address. And Bob's computer, before it sends that request, also needs to include that as part of the request so that the network can deliver it to the correct network interface card, which is attached to the server, so the server can get the message. And they call this section where we have MAC addresses on an Ethernet network, they call that the data link layer. And once Bob has collected all that information and is ready to send his request, it then gets spit out into the network in the form of individual bits. The network forwards that to the correct device, who then receives it. And if it's a web server and it's a web request, the intention is for that web server to respond back to that client. And the actual sending of the data back and forth is referred to as the physical layer. And when we say bits of data, a bit is like a light switch. It's either on or off. Little individual signals that are being sent one by one across the network. So as a quick review, Bob's computer would logically identify in the browser specifically that we're making a request of a web service. It would automatically associate TCP as the transport protocol in use. It would add the IP address of the server. It would add the MAC address, the Ethernet address of the server, and then it would send those bits on the wire. And one of the benefits of chopping these up into logical pieces like this, these layers, is that it's easier to understand as we continue to work with and study networking. It's also a lot easier to troubleshoot if we know what parts work and don't work when two computers are trying to talk with each other. And then if you'll bear with me one more moment, I want to share with you one more reveal, and that is this. In protocol stacks, these protocols that all work together, one of the protocol stacks is called TCP IP. And that's this one, what we just described. And it gets that name of the TCPIP protocol stack or the TCPIP protocol suite because of two protocols that are quite often used, including TCP at the transport layer and IP at the network layer. And that's why it's called TCPIP. So when somebody refers to a TCPIP protocol stack or a network running TCPIP, they're really referring to this whole chain of events. With each of these protocols, these sets of rules playing their respective roles. And one other thing that's pretty darn cool is that we also have layer numbers associated with this. The physical layer, will often refer to it as layer number one. And the data link layer with the ethernet addresses or MAC addresses, we refer to that as layer two. The network layer, where we have IP addresses, we refer to that as layer three. And the transport layer, where TCP or UDP is used respectively based on the application that's being used, that's layer four. And the application layer, we just call that the application layer. We don't call it layer five. It's just called the application layer. In this nugget, we had the opportunity to open the kimono a little bit and take a closer look at the logic in the TCP IP protocol suite that's being used when a computer, like a client, like Bob's computer, is talking to a web server. So my homework assignment that I would love for you to do 
is to go back about 30 seconds in this video, freeze the frame, and I'd like you to draw out that table that we created together, which will help you reinforce the concepts. So please take this opportunity to do that, and I'll see you in the next video. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.